Hi everybody, it's Sun from Lens Crafts. I got a request to share how I created these gold leaf stones. <clears throat> and what I used was these indigo blue mega flakes. And I'm going to use this one is called Morris Dance. It's got some blues and coppers and golds in it. All right. First of all, I rolled this out. I rolled it out on, on a four <clears throat> and I doubled it over. You can just roll it out on your thickest setting on your pasta machine. All right, because I want some of that blue, I'm gonna pick through a bit. Ooh, a nice big piece. This stuff is super thin. It's just like gold leaf. So I've got a really soft brush. I'm just going to tap it down to start out with. I'm going to tear it off where it's a little long. And add it up here at the top. If I could grab a hold of it. Alright, maybe one more little piece. Alright. Now I'm going to really Burnish it down with the brush. And any little flyaway pieces you can tuck down wherever they'll stick. Alright. And then if you want some extra color. You can add a little alcohol ink. Alright. That ought to be enough. Now you can either let it just bleed out or you can spray it with a bit of alcohol or you can blot it back with a with a sponge or a paper towel. All right, so just a quick spray of alcohol. And again, I'll just let it bleed out and then dry. You want this good and dry because you don't want to put it back through your pasta machine with the alcohol still wet because it will get all over the pasta machine and make a mess. I'm going to roll it through um, still on my four setting. All right, it's a doubled four, so it'll thin it out. All right. Now, if, if you want it to crackle more, run it back through um, the opposite direction. Alright, but I like it just like it is. Alright, so let's decide on a couple of cuts. As you can see, the alcohol ink will still rub off on your hands. I'm going to go with my biggest cutter, my biggest circle cutter. It 
for one. And then I'm going to, let's see. that circle just a bit. Alright. There's some interesting shapes. Um, with the circle, I'm going to take my mini cutters here. And get out the small circle, which is like a half inch maybe five-eighths and cut a hole at the top alright then I'll get out a tile And lay them down now make sure at this point that you don't have any bubbles underneath all right now with the scraps we'll just roll them up possibly should have used that one with the more black on it, a little closer to the inside. But, alright, just shape it into a sort of a ball. And then give it a good round. Alright. Do a couple of those. Boy, when you work with alcohol ink, you just cannot avoid getting it on you. Alright. There's two similar sized beads. I'm not sure what kind of little bug that was, but... Some sort of little gnat. And yep, it's still humid and sticky here in Texas. And hot. About nine o'clock and it's still about 85 degrees all right last one all right 
four beads. I'm going to bake these at 275 for an hour after I poke the hole in the beads once I find my bead pin. And I've shown this many times, but pick your spot. Slowly start to spin the bead and you'll get an idea of where to center it. And just keep twisting, keep twisting till it comes out the other end. Alright. Then roll with a rather speedy motion. Stick it through the other direction. And seat the hole. I'll show you one more time. Twisting the bead will give you an idea whether it's centered or not. If it's lopsided, it will kind of wobble. Alright. Then I push the head of the pin up into the hole just a bit. That just gives it a nicer, nicer look. Alright, and there's your bead. Bake them, and I'll be back. While those are baking, I thought I would just share with you some of the other colors of these gilding flakes. This one is called Chocolate Box. It's got some lovely browns. A little bit of a... Sort of a green, sort of a mossy green. With some golds and coppers. Really pretty. Right. This one is called Manchester Tart. And it's basically just gold, silver, and copper mixed together. And these are the indigo blue flakes. This one is called gin and tonic. It's got a mixture of green, silver, and a bit of gold. Right. And this again is the Morris dance that I actually did the piece with. It's got blues, a bit of copper, and some gold. It's really pretty. Alright, now these are the Cosmic Shimmer brand. This one is called Red Blaze. It's got a bit of green, some red, with the copper and gold. These are a bit finer flake, but still you'll find pieces that you'll be able to unfold. Alright. Alright, this one is called Gemstones. It's a mixture of copper, gold, a little blue, and some green. Alright, this one too is really, really pretty. The copper even runs into the dark uh, wine-colored copper. All 
right and then last but not least this one is the calypso which is golds with copper and some blues and greens this one is basically a lighter version of the one you just saw all right as you can see some of it is streaked with a bit of red I really love to use these flakes you get so many color variations when you use them I also have um, all right, keep in mind these aren't in the containers they came in but these are just gold flakes and these are just silver And last but not least, you can also do this technique with just sheet leaf. This one is the Mona Lisa and it's the variegated red leaf. And this is what it looks like. Alright. This is the only color I have um, a leaf, a sheet leaf in. I don't know why <laughs> it's just the only one I have it's really difficult where I live to um, get anything like this without ordering it online I live like 70 miles from a craft store so 140 mile round trip is a little tough to deal with all right it was easier when my husband worked that far away as I would ride in to work with him and I could go to the craft store, but luckily he works close at home now. Alright, so while these are baking, these are the different leaves that I have. Alright. Now here they are out of the oven. Really pretty. And once again, I'm going to show you how to dome some resin over the top of these this is my doming mat i'll try to remember to put below where i got it from all right first thing i'm going to do is move the beads out of the way and remove these from the tile place them directly on the mat all right, all right the resin i'll be using today is the amazing clear cast part A and part B it's a one-to-one -one ratio and I've got a small measuring cup and I've got plenty of molds standing by if I mix too much which I usually do on purpose because you can never have too many faces or whatever else your mold is all right so I'm actually going to start with part B and I'm going to measure two drams or a quarter ounce Then I'm going to measure the same amount of the part A. It's best if you can hold the cup at eye level. And then you want to mix and really and truly you'll hear this said over and over again by 
different resin artists, you want to mix for two minutes at a minimum. And you do that because resin works on a chemical bond. So you need that working time for the bond to develop. All right, and you want to stir and occasionally scrape down the sides. And while you're stirring, you're scraping the bottom. And try to avoid lifting the stick out of the resin because that will give you more bubbles. Amazing casting resin and amazing clear cast are really good at releasing the bubbles. <clears throat> All right, so just continue stirring for two minutes. And after you're done stirring for your two minutes, you're going to want to let it set and rest again for about two minutes. That will allow any bubbles that are in there, any of the larger bubbles to come to the surface and pop. All right, all right. It's been about two minutes. As you can see, there's still a lot of fine bubbles in the mix, but those will come to the surface and be easy to pop with a lighter flame, with your heat gun, something like that. All right, so I'm going to turn the stick perpendicular to the cup, and that will allow the stream to pour a little more finely. All right. Now what you want to do is allow it to just flow for a minute. That will also help disperse the bubbles. If you continue to let it flow, it will reach the edge and stop. Um, surface tension won't allow it to flow over the edge but I'm always impatient so I'll just coax it to the edge again when you get a problem with it flowing over the edge is usually when you put too much resin So you just want to work slowly. Um, this resin has a cure time of about 16 hours. Um, it can be a little faster depending on your um, temperature and humidity. So I should say about 12 to 16 hours. All right. Now, just moving your head in the light, you'll be able to see whether you've missed any of the edges, which is pretty good on that piece. Alright, I don't know if you noticed that, but I did push a bit too hard 
on this side and did cause it to go over the edge. But that's okay because it's on this domey mat. It will just fall off onto the domey mat, which you can pull off later. You can sort of wipe the edge. Alright, now if you're worried about any bubbles at this point, just take a lighter and gently pass the flame over the surface. Not touching the surface, but really close to the surface. That will pop those bubbles right out. Alright, again, but moving your head around so that the light hits the surface of the resin all over, you'll be able to see whether you've got any bubbles. I've got just a couple there. Doesn't appear that I have any on the other piece. Alright. Alright, just taking a trusty big ladder, big top of ladder, just pass it over the surface. Alright. Checking again, and it's a nice, smooth, silky surface. Alright, now you just want to let this cure. I usually let it cure overnight. But since it's so early in the morning, I'll check it this evening before I go to bed and see how cured it is. Alright, so I'll be back in the morning to show you how we finish it off. Sorry, but real quick. Just going to fill up a couple of my molds with the leftover resin. At this point, you can add glitters to it. You can add colors to it. There are lots of things you can do. So, I'm actually going to add... I'm just going to add a drop of white. I don't want it to be white, white. I just want a touch of color. And this is the Illuminolite um, dye. And I'm not going to touch the tip of the stick to the resin bottle because I could transfer the resin onto the bottle that way. I'm going to wait till I have a drip and then touch the drip. Might have been a bit more than I wanted, but Alright, then you can add some glitter if you want. Or glitter flakes. Let's see. These are the Stampendous. Um, it's a glitter assortment. And I'm going to use the snow, I believe. And this is a glass glitter. It does not have a shaker top. So I'm going to very carefully just sprinkle in a bit of this glitter. Not much because... If you put too much, one, it can interfere with the um, cure.
curing of the glitter, but for for better reasons, if the if the resin was still clear, you don't want to obliterate the uh, the pattern. I'm going to show you what I mean. I did this a while back ago, and it's actually got a hieroglyph stamp impressed into the polymer clay. But you almost can't see it because I put too much glitter in the resin. Alright. I'm going to fill up the moon first because it's the larger of the two. And then I'll go for the face. Okay, they're both faces, but... So, you want to you want to move this somewhere where it can set till overnight. I've got a level spot over off to the side. That's why I have the domi mat on a glass so I can easily carry it. All right, all right. Here they are after the resin has set. Really pretty. This one, I've already put the clay back on. Alright, so I've already rolled out a sheet of black Primo. Rolled my texture sheet on it. And now I'm just going to cut out the back for the round one. Alright. Again, I'm angling my craft knife back towards the center of the pendant. That will give it a slightly beveled edge. There they are. Now, I didn't put any bacon bond between the front and the back. So, if it's not stuck down, which it really isn't, then I'll just squeeze a little on the back.
All right, now you can add a quick gluon bell at the top or you can go ahead and bake it again and drill a hole. I'm gonna add a bell. And my signature stamp on the back. All right, now this is my signature stamp. I just created this myself, and I'll come back in the next video and show you how to do that. It's super easy. Just position it centered under the hole. Alright, there it is on that one. Once again, with a really light touch. Then just put a little bacon bond on either side of the bale. And once again, I'll try to remember to put the link for the where I got the bales at. These actually came from Canada. And they're super nice bales. Alright. Just want to lift a little pocket up, slide the bale in with the curved side to the back. Again, a little light touch. Then I'll take my needle tool and kind of spread out that bacon bond a bit after it bakes it won't really show the main thing you want to make sure is that you didn't get any on the front if you do, you want to wipe it off immediately and make sure there's no residue left on the front. Alright. Alright, so back in the oven these will go. And since I'm using Amazing Clearcast, um, it can go back in the oven. Clay temperatures won't hurt it. So, back in the oven these will go. Right, and while that's baking, I've got this, this is a bead drying rack that my husband made me. All it is, is a piece of plywood, rabbited into a piece of 1x4, uh, with a bunch of pins stuck in the top.
Alright. And all that will do is allow me to paint a varnish on the beads and give them somewhere to dry. Alright, so while that's baking, I'll do that. I've got, uh, this is the Diamond Flecto Varathane varnish. I got this from Polymer Clay Express. I'm not sure if they still sell it, but if they do, check it out. Um, they also sell the Varathane online at Joann's. Um, Walmart sells it. You just want to be sure you're getting the water-based version. All right, I've got a nice soft brush. Now, I could be doing this with resin, but I just find that uh, the Varathane provides just as glossy a coat. And I don't have to wait for it to cure. <laughs> It'll dry in about 30 minutes. It really does need time to cure, but it's dry to the touch in 30 minutes. So you can. Um, pop them back in the oven to heat cure if you'd like a little stray piece of polyfill <laughs> I do have a video showing the uh, setup I use in my oven try to remember to link that. I'm not very good at that, so don't hold me to that. You just want to make sure that um, you're not leaving any globs that will tend to want to fall to the bottom and drip. Those can dry without being disturbed. Alright, here they are out of the oven and finished. They turned out really pretty. Alright, so there's crackled gold leafing on polymer clay. Thanks everybody for watching. I'll uh, I'll show um, finishing off the pendant in the next video. Bye for now.